Hello, this is Conan Stoops, and usually, for newer and returning people that are coming to the Lumi Legacy PvP scene, it is pretty hard to actually know what to use and what to not use, because your meta knowledge is pretty lacking. However, in today's video, I'll be providing 4 easy to use defensive cores that will teach you the game and the many playstyles you can run, such as balance, semi-stall, offense, and you can of course learn the meta through type matchups, double predicting, switching, and all of that stuff, and of course, turn you into a better PvPer. Obviously, these cores are going to be versions that you could be used later into the game, so do not think that it is just limited to this meta. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So the first chord I will be mentioning will improve your skills as an offensive player that will help you learn how to predict moves, what the opponent is trying to do, and get forward progress with your offensive team. And this, of course, is accomplished with the Phasionaut core that I've come up here. Phasionaut is a very solid Lumion in this metagame because while it's definitely not the most consistent Lumion and is not for everyone, it does have the ability Malware, so you actually have the ability to tank through a lot of melee attacking Lumions, specifically the ones that are reliant on their abilities, so you can take them out and then of course hit them super effectively or neutrally or just cripple them that way. Phasionaut as it stands is a pretty solid Lumion because of how good it actually has in matchups in the metagame. It of course suffers from a lot of melee attacking Lumions to hit it super effectively. However, it has the speed tier above them, it has malware to take away their damage, and in Lumion cases such as Totab, Joltooth, Halvantic, and more so Colossotrops and Vesperatu, all of those Lumions don't want to be losing their abilities, and of course their damage is being taken away with that. Phasionaut just does a very good job at that specific niche. And because we're going to be using a more robust variant of a Phasionaut, we're going to be going over some teammates. Phasionaut and Harvesek, while of course can be replaced for your snack, I do think it is a pretty good core. Specifically because Harvesek does have the ability to, like Phasionaut, hardwall a lot of stuff because of their type matchups, and it does patch up some of its weaknesses, specifically to Ambush Kanibo and Crab Tana. However, it is not the most consistent thing in the world, so that's why you can use your snack if you do want to. However, because both of you guys do not have sweet jars, I do understand. And of course, the two other ranged walls or ranged supporting Lumines are going to be Cleone and Valkyrie. This is the wrong Valkyrie set. I don't have the very smart clever on me right at this moment, but smart clever Valkyries do have a lot of potential because Valkyrie can just provide itself as a pretty good ranged wall Lumion on your teams that can support the team with Radiant Forecast right here, this move. For those of you who do not know, Radiant Forecast is a very strong move that can help set up attacks for melee attackers, and that helps out really well. You can of course pair Falcony with the likes of Tatab, Esperatu, which this core conveniently doesn't really share a lot of type matchups with. And Cleone, Cleone is mainly here for the offense that it does bring with Stratagem, Dissipate, and Gust. You can of course use, use Peace of Mind if you do want to. And this is really mainly just for the Soul Burst Repidon and all of that matchups. You're going to be seeing Cleone a lot in this video, not necessarily because it is a Lumion that is contributing to the core, but of course it's good for just for the metagame matchups to keep your teams healthy from the more scarier offensive Lumions. Other options, I did say Har your snack over Harvestek is an option, but if you would rather not use something like Tata, Best Brasu, um, Rat, something like that, you can use Seer Knight and devise another offensive core, because Seer Knight does have a lot of flexibility on teams. It can provide itself as a pretty good stop to Nevermare, which this team doesn't really want to face. And of course, it has a lot of offensive options with Slapdown, Barbs, Boiling Press, Searing Steel. You have Drudge as well. There's just a lot of options that would go with this team. So I do think that this team, specifically these four, is probably one of the harder cores to use. However, this is a pretty good core. And of course, it can teach you the game, specifically through offensive playstyles. So let's get right onto the next core. Next up, this core necessarily isn't a quote-unquote defensive core, this is more mostly fitting on 
bulky offense or just balanced type teams. However, because of a very good Lumion in this metagame, Dragonin fulfills a lot of defensive niches that you would need on your teams. Usually, it is pretty hard to find an offensive or defensive Lumion that can actually stop the likes of Vesperatu and Your Soul and Umbrat. However, Dragonin is one of those Lumions that can. And because of Dragonin's immense offense with Exorm, Draco being peace of mind, I do not have Provoke on here, so remember that Provoke is over Slumber. And because of how greatly defensive it is, specifically on its melee defense side, it actually has a ton of niches that will help it stop these Dark and Spirit types. So this core is going to be mainly composed of Dragonin, Yursnack, Cleone, and Sierna. Your snack just walls everything that Dragonin can't on the melee defense side. Your snack has a lot of great matchups, specifically against Tatab, which Dragonin can't really cover. And of course, it does provide offense in that sort of vein, which is of course very good. And as for Cleone, same reason as I have before. However, it does have some nice synergy because Dragonin, Your snack, both weak to light types, Cleone can deal with Valkyrie and Jalusa. Assuming you do have peace of mind on this set. And as for the last one, we got Seer Knight. Seer Knight is mainly here because you are weak to other ice types like Glashadia. It has Terrifying, which is barely solid utility. However, an issue with this core is that it is weak to Zulong. So running Pyrolin, even though the nerf still happened, it is still a very good check and counter to Zulong because it still takes... 3 hit or 2 hit KO, 3 hit or 4 hit KOs from its coverage. Even if it's like a mixed Zulong with Chili Chomp or something like that, or a very smart Zulong, this Pyrolin is, or very clever, not this personality, is always going to be doing very good against Zulong. And while people may seem that Pyrolin is a bad Lumion, once people actually do test this out, Pyrolin will still provide itself as a pretty solid blanket ranged wall check to a lot of the metagame. Jamie is not getting rid of Pyrolin that easily. Come on, guys. And of course, Phasionaut is a pretty good option over your snack because Phasionaut and Dragonin do have similar type matchups that is pretty important on many teams. However, there is do what something that I do want to mention. If you do not want to run this, you can run something like Obsidigon or Tundralin because it is a more bulkier focused core. Something like that if you do really want to run that. And yeah, so let's get right on to the next core. So the next core that I will be talking about has pretty much stood the test of time and is a pretty day old core. This is going to be a Seer Knight and Gargolem defense core. Seer Knight and Gargolem defense type wise and matchup wise is very good. Seer Knight for example, it is doesn't really want to take hits from earth or electric types and Brawler types, which Gargolem Defense either resists or is immune to, and as for Gargolem Defense, it doesn't want to take hits from Plant or Ice types, which Seer Knight does have the ability to take hits from. And of course, matchup-wise, Seer Knight can take the hits from Glashadia and Wintrix, stuff that Gargolem Defense can't really do. Gargolem Defense can stand the test of time against stuff like Joltooth or Halmantic. You might need Mudslide, but obviously, you don't really need to, you can just force them out and you can just have Gust as the, your option there. It is something that you can consider. And that of course is pretty good for these two Lumions. However, these guys are still weak to water so using Lumions such as Cleone for the ranged water types and Obsidigon for the melee water types is very solid. Adding Obsidigon and Cleone to this core is just very good as well, as Obsidigon provides itself as a pretty good blanket check to a lot of the melee attackers in this metagame. So if you're not bringing Seer Knight or Gargolem Defense to your battles, then Obsidigon or Cleone can do the same. Cleone, same reasons as last time, it does provide some hazard utility if, in case you do not want to run Gust or Mudslide, however, running Gust or Mudslide is just better and then having Cleone run something like Peace of Mind, that is something if you want to do that. However, Cleone can run Dissipate along with replacing your snack for Obsidigon, which you can run Baffle, so that does help your case quite a bit. However, other than that, you can run Lumions such as Valkyrie over Seer Knight because while the core kind of loses its weaknesses on that part, Valkyrie is still a pretty good Lumion and a metal type that you can use in case you don't want to run like double fire metal types if you're trying to run Eruptodon or Novidius 
something like that. And Tundra Lin here has a lot better matchups than Obsidigon, specifically because it has better matchups against Halbantic or Joltooth. However, it doesn't have the same case for Obsidigon. It doesn't wall as nearly as a lot of stuff that Obsidigon does. And Gargoyle Defense here already does the job well for Halbantic or Joltooth. So I do think that this core is probably my favorite core, as I've used this core quite a lot in tournaments, and probably the best core that you could get results with, even if you're just a balance or a semi-stall, or maybe an even offensive type of person. This core just favors a lot of things, it can interchange with a lot of these Lumians, and that of course makes this core one of the better cores to use. So the final core that I will be mentioning is the easiest and the most meta core, and that is going to be Gastroke's semi-stall. Gastroke's, specifically Solburst Gastroke, you do not want to use the base form, is one of the best options to use for any semi-stall or balance type team. Gastroke is just really good as it just provides itself as a pretty good blanket check and counter to a lot of melee or not a melee but ranged Lumians and because it does have tamp and poison having that ability to just be an offensive threat and can sweep teams with tamp that's just really good on Gastroke. Of course Gastroke won't be it without a core with Pyrelin and Gurgle Defense, Obsidigon and Cleone. All of these guys pretty much cover any sort of matchup you want in this metagame. Of course we do have Pyro Obsy here, another very good core that has stood the test of time. And while Pyrelin still nerfed and not as good as it was once before in terms of blanket checking a lot of ranged walls, that's Gastroke's job. And then Pyrelin here is mainly resorted to stuff like Lashadia. Of course Obsidigon being another blanket check melee wall is very good. And then you can have Gargoyle Defense as your hazard removal. Robust or clever, it doesn't really matter. This is just very solid. And then as for Cleone, Cleone is also another good Lumion that I do suggest. Mainly because this is needed on a lot of teams because of Soul Burst or Repeton. Other options that you can use over this is going to be Seer Knight over Pyrelin and then Hondralin over Obsidigon. Of course, this means that Gargoyle Defense doesn't really have a really good use here, and then you can use Cleone over that, and then you can have like a Your Snack on the final slot. Make sure that if you're not using Gargoyle Defense, you have to run Gus Cleone, because Gus Cleone is going to be your only form of hazard removal on this sort of team. However, while I did say this is the most easiest core to use, there is some difficulties in using this core, especially if you are an offensive type of player trying to transition and put to a more bulkier playstyle because this is going to be bringing a lot of long times to your matches and, and at that point it's really your patience against the opponent's patience that's just how i see this team while i certainly won't really use this core anytime soon there is a lot of people that want to know the sort of matchups that defensive lumians will be playing for their teams and honestly this is probably the easiest Time that you'll actually be using if you want to learn that sort of things. So with that out of the way, let's get to the conclusion and my thoughts on these cores. So the reality of Lumi Legacy is no matter what cores you want to use or try to be different, there is going to be the dominant meta matchups that you want to have, such as putting water, bulky water types on teams and then having a metal type, having a fire type. All that stuff is needed on teams, not to mention the fact that you have to watch out for tons of offensive threats such as Zulong, Joltooth, Obsidragon, not Obsidragon, but Solburst Erupton, Dakuda Solburst, and Dakuda Regular, and so much more. There is just a lot of things that you really have to watch out for, and honestly, that just makes team building a lot more restricting. And that's kind of the sad part for Lumi Legacy because you can't really have a lot of creativity with defensive cores. Offensive cores, you can make things work, but for defensive ones, it just really is hard to. And ironically, having a lot of offensive threats makes the meta a lot more semi-stall and bulky. While I definitely think it's not as bad as fewer patches, like earlier in like 2023, I do think that this is still a pretty restricting patch overall. So let me know what you thought on your these cores and if you're going to be using them down in the comment section. 
course, you can suggest your own cores. These cores aren't limited to. I've tried my best to have a mix of meta, but of course, niche, but still very functioning cores in this metagame. So yeah, this is Connor Stoops signing off to remind you that Zulong is still a dumpster fire. Thank you.